Wild berries, yeah. No. Mm. This is just Makuga. This isn't the wild berries. Oh, so, so everything I just did, go back and watch that again with only half the infliction. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, prime time versus happy hour. <laughs> it's actually a good name for this. Yep. What's going on, guys? We're the Sin Fanatics. My name is Chris Adams. And I'm Robert Adams. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a fun little uh, schmo down, a little single action here between Josh Makuga and Paulo Yama. Apparently it's a stipulation. So to catch you up if you haven't been following, during the last Wild Berries vs. Founding Fathers match, at one point Josh Makuga got a little bit of the happy juice in him and went a little crazy by slapping a championship belt, namely Dan Merle's championship belt, the singles belt, onto the floor, picked it up, and then decided to floss it between his legs. Which is great for entertainment. Fun for us. Not so great necessarily for the respect that that belt deserves. And Super I, disrespectful. And I get it. This is a YouTube show. It's all in good fun. We're answering movie trivia questions and whatnot. But there actually is some skill involved. The stuff that these competitors do is not easy. It takes knowledge. It takes being able to store and remember things. Earning that belt, even though it is a belt that, I don't know, what was it Brian Ward or whoever designs it, probably designs it like out in their garage or in their shed. Regardless of like how much work is put in, whether a little bit of work or a lot of work, this isn't necessarily something you want to disrespect there's that legitimacy way. behind it and you can't just you can't just talk to your thumb at legitimacy like that you yeah know? uh so you know you know we right now we have this stipulation which josh mcuga is currently on suspension from being able to compete for like two months or so uh sam the singles commissioner has given him the stipulation for this match that if he beats oyama it'll be lifted but if he doesn't, he's going to get another month added on. Which is a good stipulation. Also, I'm wondering how busy Makuga is in the next couple of months. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's Why is that relevant? Anyway. <laughs> um, so, I mean, for this one, like, here's the thing. Makuga always brings entertainment value, obviously. Mm -hmm. Even at the risk of being very disrespectful, it's still fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, it is. Um, but Oyama, in his short career, though maybe not the best performance at the free-for-all, does actually know some things. Yeah, he. I believe he went uh, undefeated in the fan leagues. Yeah, something like that. And he's already come in winning his match against Brendan Meyer. Mm -hmm. um, now the, who did do fantastic at the free-for-all. Who free -for -all. did amazing at the free-for-all. <laughs> Uh, now, the thing is, is Paul, Paul Oyama did come in guns blazing and a little bit of a cocky attitude going in there. Just a little bit. So, while it, it's great for, say, Paul Oyama, the character, is this really going to be able to be something that he can keep up? Is his personal knowledge going to be able to sustain his cocky character? Yeah. Or is this all going to just fall for show? Who knows? So the question on the table is the who you got question. Now, I'm going to answer this first. I want Makuga to win. Just because it's going to be funny. I absolutely I absolutely want Makuga to win. It's going to be Oyama. Yeah, I have a feeling Paul, Paul Oyama has got this. Makuga has come out, and I mean, the, the fact of the matter is we've seen him in years past, but he's come out on Collider Live at least saying, I win by, I, I either win or I lose by just guessing. I mm -hmm. try to guess and hope that that gets me the right answer. And you, typically he does a pretty good job at guessing, except when it comes to James Horner. But that's <laughs> beside the point. The point is, is for some of these competitors that you face up against now in this season, in season six, you don't just guess. You can't win by doing that. I mean, it, it, it does depend on the type of answer. I mean, Josh McCuga has proven that he has movie knowledge. I mean, if I was to ask you just right off the bat, 
who who did the score for a Tim Burton movie, Danny Elfman. You're more likely to just because of context clues of that, you go with Danny Elfman. But I mean, there has been a couple of Tim Burton movies that Danny Elfman has not done the score for. But I mean, it's a safe bet. But if so. you have to guess, guess Danny Elfman. Yes. It's like pick letter choice C on a multiple choice because usually that might be the correct answer. That's probably just a rumor, though. I don't know if that's actually true. But in this case, always pick Danny Elfman with Tim Burton. So yeah, I mean, I agree. I would like to see Makuga win, but I believe it's going to be Oyama. I think Oyama has shown that he's got knowledge and skills for this game, at, at the very least, knowledge beyond Makuga's knowledge. Mm-hmm. Makuga does have the entertaining factor, though, and I really want him to win. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let's get into this and see what's going to happen. That's right. That's right. You're my brother. Without me, you're nothing. I do like this ad. Just a reminder, this hasn't happened yet. Me. I get to choose the Still excited. The next match, so you know what? And we are eager as all get out. Andrew Guy throwing down the hammer has challenged Ben Bateman to a May showdown in Houston. Booker T's wrestling arena will oh, house That's what's going to look like when we show up. <laughs> Didn't know what building I'm looking for. Now I do. In a stipulation match, Guy said if Bateman happens to beat him, he can choose his next singles opponent. If Bateman loses, Bateman will not be able to compete in this year's It's a stipulation match, too. There's a lot of stipulation matches this season. They're fun. There's risk. There's a... Uh, there's weight to them. Yeah. on that stage. I was born to compete. I was born to perform. It's gonna be good. Emma. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Grace. Uh, no, not, not particularly. Just kind of going over some stuff here. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, hey, buddy. Um. Yeah. Which, uh, what is this? Uh, this is the current roster of everybody that is active within the Schmodown Teams Division, of which I am the commissioner. So I'm just right, working on right. some matchups for upcoming matches. Good, good. Um, actually, that's perfect because I wanted to talk to you about that. You know, everybody is super excited about Stacy and her new partner, yeah, as definitely. they should be. Yeah. I um, actually, I would love to know who Stacy's new partner is going to be if you're going to. Tell me who it is. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, but we would like a match. Oh. I mean, we've had mystery teammates in the team division before. There's no reason why Stacy can't compete with an unknown partner, assuming said partner exists. Right, right, so. They do. Okay, uh, well, then this is the roster right here. Go ahead and take a look and you know, let me know. You know, some people in kind of this range here. It's who you would want to play. Let's go with the Shire Wolves. Well, yeah. A lot of interesting choices. Yeah. I mean, JTE certainly has it coming. Um, mm. Oh, God. Nice. I mean, Snyder. I would love to shut up Bibiani, I'll tell you that. Um, Janine and Irwin. Let's go with these guys. Late to the party? Oh, there you go. Yeah, link to the party. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give them a call. They say they have to drive from Arizona, but, uh, you know, I they think they've been wanting to get back in the game, so. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, I'll just call them up and see if they're game. I approve. Perfect. Call them up. I'm like, I don't even care who Stacy's partner is at this point. I'm not sure if I should say you're welcome or not. Reactor to reactor, yes. I am excited for that. That is going to be a fun match. Nice to see them get back in it. Love Vanessa and Robert. Late to the Party is a very good team, and if I remember correctly, they've beaten Critically Acclaimed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very infamous match. Yeah. Marquita. Am I pronouncing it right? Marquia. Marquia. Sorry, Marquia. You could have just waited until her name popped up. <laughs> you know, part of reacting is jumping the gun on a few things and then throwing an extra letter in somebody's name. Having to eat crow later. I mean, just. I haven't had dinner yet, so. Favorite of mine. 
Actually, I haven't. So That's I a know good, that you're not really point. billing him all that much, but... Look, we, we, were, we were damn near BFFs in real life. It's just when it comes to the schmodown, I always bet against the guy. And sometimes he proves me wrong. He does have, I, I would say at this point, mythological guessing skills. So he is able to pull answers out of this camp. Mind. Yeah, it is kind of legendary. I love Beautiful. that today's match is kind of like a redemption match that meets gambling. It's like a double or nothing. Still good. Yeah. It, he it's gets a his slate cleaned or he gets extra time added on. So <laughs> You say gambling and I think of Makuga in Vegas and nobody needs that sight, but you are very accurate when you say Dude, I can just see Makuga going in with those like flashy jackets he used to wear. That would be awesome. And so what happens? He gets I run this place. for a month by the commissioner, Sam Levine, and then Levine there you says, go. Okay, look, right there. You, there it is. You can He'll walk up and he'll be like, hit me! And I'll be like, sir, you're, you talk about Paul Oyama, Marquia, you're at the, so many rookies the that we're see in machine. Oyama may be the best of the whole bunch because that was a good joke when I remembered what it was. The slot machine. Hey, Mark Ellis is talking. A very good who's a stand-up comedian who's good at Darling. delivering yeah, quips. Loves just the mention of the kid, but Oyama, he's coming on strong as a heel. Do you see him pulling off the, I guess you would consider an upset according to the rankings against Makuga here today. You know, I think that primetime Paul Oyama is enough of a shark that he knows that these waters are bloody. He knows that Josh, well, Makuga, is very thirsty to get his win on, but also uh, Oyama is younger, hungrier, and is behind him at the top of the stairs. So this could literally be anybody's match. You say young and hungry with Oyama, and I agree with you. You say thirsty when it comes to Josh Makuga, and I would also add sweaty to those adjectives. Well, let's take a look at nice. the pre-match interviews right now. <laughs> Because thirsty could be a couple of things. <laughs> Sam is very particular about the belt. Sam Levine. Sorry, Josh, you are suspended effective immediately for two months. I apologize. Elliot was more outraged than he was. It was more of a shove, a push, if you will. It was in the way of my arms. I've got long arms that are hair. Right. I know you're already serving a little bit of a suspension. Yeah. But uh, here's a stipulation. Okay. I want you to play Polo Young. Okay. I don't, I don't like that guy. Prime time, Paul Oyama. Now, Paul, he also comes from a family. He thinks that he's even better than Chance Ellison. The adventures of Tim Tim, Joe Bright, Jonah Hill. We you need to see that matchup. Yeah. That's why they call him prime time, because the kid, I, I would say confident, mm -hmm. very borderline cocky. What's your plan going forward? I mean, whoever's on the warpath. If you win, suspension over. I'll beat you. i got to add an extra month. And the extra month? Yeah. And I will take it. Okay. Yes. That was some fun music. All right, well, you see, and, and look, o Oyama, cool, collected, he, he's focused, but Josh Makuga, it, it just is a buddy of mine. It's nice to see his exuberance and probably his dance moves in a little bit here back in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Yes, absolutely. That and along with his fashion sense. I love <laughs> that this man loves pastels and can match it like anybody's business. Hey, it's the it, it's the spring season and Josh Makuga is one of our favorite hoppity hop rabbits here in the movie Trivia Showdown. So if you look okay. at notable accomplishments of these two with Oyama, it's simple. Came up through the fan league and had a very definitive uh, and impressive victory in his debut. You look at Josh Makuga, notable accomplishments, Marquia, I would just say being the wild man. The wild man is not a person. It has become a state of mind. He's like Batman. It's become a symbol more than a man. Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, he was a 2014 finalist. I mean, he does put the wild and wild berries, and you need that wild man, you know, as being part of your docket. So I, I have a lot of feelings for Josh, but with Paul Oyama, I mean, he's determined to be the youngest in get it. You're drinking a beer. Time. And I kind of need for that to happen. My <laughs> nod to Josh Makuga in this. One of the OGs of the Shmoda. Marquia, are you ready to go? Oh, I am drinking ready juice. to go. Let's get this started. Wild it juice. It is time for the movie trivia. Nope, just Shmoda. juice. <laughs> Nothing wrong about it. And handling the introductions today is none other than Marquia herself. Marquia, when you are ready. Huh. Introducing first. Nice. With a record of one win, zero defeats, he is Prime Time Paul Oyama! The 
question is, is he gonna use his catchphrase? <laughs> yeah. Ah, I get it. It's Morton. No, Morton Salt. That's. I like it. No, he, he seems to it's enjoy and, and, and dare I say revel in the fact that he does get booze, and some people feed off that negative energy. Yeah, he looks like a stone cold killer. I am ready for this. Taking a sip for his water, and his opponent needs no introduction, but we'll get one anyway. And his opponent, representing the Wildberries, with a record of eight wins, ten defeats. He is a two thousand fourteen. <laughs> Is that a robe suit? I think love it. Gets a handshake from Oyama. Wow, Josh Makuga. Uh, exhorting his fan base on with chants of wild berries. And Marquia, from those two introductions and seeing these two gentlemen at the desk, it looks like less of a trivia show and more like Makuga is about to initiate Oyama into the skulls. Yeah. <laughs> Just a quick heads up, guys. Uh, this this pool blazer is brought to you by 209 Mare. It's a pool blazer only company. Uh, if you guys are going to pools, lakes, oceans this summer, there's no no blazer quite like 209 Mare. You're welcome. Uh, Makuga seeming to read our minds because Marquis and I were both wondering where does he get? Where does he get that? I mean, just the texture around the neckline alone. Where does he get those wonderful it's, uh, toys? It's a lovely and fabric. It keeps the neck cool. Robes and jackets. It covered. Are we here to play or are we here to do Nobody parts? wants to hear you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving the action along. Makuga used to be sponsored by Loudmouth. Ever since he went to one of the actors from the Fast and Furious franchise's mansions, he seems to have outclassed even his good buddy Mark Ellis. I had to wear my own jacket coat to this taping. All right, gentlemen, the rules of round number one. You all know that each question you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer and we would up here at the answer desk just love it if you could uh, be legible when Please. you write down no your problem. answer you know just a little bit he yes, just sir. graduated sixth grade so he just finished his uh <laughs> cursive it's hard, hard, to, hard to be legible when you don't even know the answers it's, yeah. uh, good luck it was good that was a good retort it was good, it was good. It's, it's, a, it's a battle of age it's a battle of wits and we are about to get oh, ready yeah. uh, wow to it's gonna be amazing wild man Bakuga, are you ready to go buddy? Yep. mark you know what I was born in a full blazer and born ready. All right, Paul Oyama, are you ready? Set your clocks, let's do this. Let's get ready to smoke down! I like that one. Set your clocks, let's do this. That's uh, a good one. All right, the better. Kick off in the world of action slash adventure, and Marquia will be administering the question. What was the last name of Holly's annoying co worker that gets himself Oh, no. Oh, jeez. We just need the uh, the last name. Last name. Can you make sure you lead off with categories? Just uh, I said action adventure. Oh, you did. Yeah. I didn't hear it. I'm yeah. sorry. You just you just play oh, the game, guys. You just dropped five, down out of my favorite four, right there. I, yeah. I wasn't three, directed three, at you. Five, it was directed at Mark. Two, two, it was directed one, at Mark. I said action adventure. Ben's down. What's your answer? Ellis. It is in fact Ellis. <laughs> Ellis. Ellis. It is Ellis. He like nose candy. Cybold. Uh, Whitney Cybold. By the way, that watch. It was Whitney Cybold. That is. Yeah. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Wrong. Yes. Bobby Booby. Oh. These are new releases. Cool. Movies that I bought you a ticket to go see. Yeah, that you never took me to. His last name was Ellis. Which yeah, right. 2018 comedy stars Ed Helms, John Hamm, and Jeremy Renner? Good movie. Well, that was a quick write. It's a good movie. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. I don't think you've got as much credit as it deserved. One time's up for Marquia and up there at the desk, Paul. Tag. It is, in fact, tag. Does Josh have I'd like to also say tag. He got it. Right? Tag. Tag. I'm going to just go ahead and say Avengers Endgame, even though it has a... <laughs> That's a very fair... Hey, Mark, I don't know if you noticed this, but Paul's last name, Oyama, leads into a Michael McDonald song, Yomo Be There. Oyama Be There. All right. See you guys. Makuga has just lost five points. I know. I don't know this is much about me. And he slipped down to my seventh favorite. 
right then. In the category of dramas, Ooh. this Marvel actor played the father Will Hayes, opposite Abigail Breslin in the 2008 film Definitely Maybe. There's a lot to that question that didn't need to be there because I love Definitely Maybe. Yeah. And, uh, one of my favorite ones in the last ten years. Five. Mm -hmm. Four. I have a feeling that I'm wrong. Ready? Yep. Two. One. Pence down, Josh. I believe it was Chris Evans. Uh, that is incorrect. No. Ryan Reynolds. He Absolutely. does have it. Yep. And Chris Evans. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. That's what I thought. Like, I wrote Chris Evans. They said pins down. I was like, dang it, that's Ryan Reynolds. All right. Next question. Yep. In the world of crime movies, crime films, in the film Widows, who plays Veronica, wife to renowned bank robber Harry Rawlings? Yes. Right, an excellent that was, movie. Did you see Widows? Um, I did. Oh, what and is I was her a big, name? Big fan of it. It's got <laughs> The Widow oh, on Amazon. That three, was a train wreck. Two, and I can remember one. Name. Pens down. Paul, what do you Waller, got? right? Uh, we have a lot to do today. Crying is not one of them. Viola Davis. Yes, yeah. it is. Did Josh have it? Viola Davis. He does. Excellent. Viola Davis. You hear the crowd just really wanting Josh to stay. I'd like in to the apologize to RB3. I didn't see the movie, but I did see the trailer. It was great. <laughs> Your next category <laughs> is fantasy sci-fi. Oh, gross. Who directed 2015's <sighs> Tomorrowland? <sighs> if, I, you, you uh, know, if I put you at a blockbuster, which category do you go to first? Oh, I got action adventure. Oh, really? Oh, I don't yeah. think so, Five, but... Four, if it's a Thursday, though, I go to comedy. Three, two, it's one. Pens down. Josh McCougar. Uh, Brad Bird? Yes. Yeah, oh, that's oh, right. Bird. <laughs> George Clooney. Brad Bird. Yeah, George Clooney was in it. And Makuga hanging in nicely so far with three questions to go. Whoa, whoa. Your next category. I mean, hanging in? You're hanging hang in. in. shots when you can. I, I would have said that about any competitor I mean, up there on the goodness. desk. It's like you weren't in my wedding at all. You were just a patron there serving alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, buddy. Your next question is in the category of comedies. Cool. You're supposed to. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, right. right. And your question is. <laughs> too late. What is the title? I love it. What is the title of the third film in Ice Cube's Friday series? <laughs> and I believe uh, RV3 just had a nice uh, bowl of hearty soup. Yes. Well, if you follow the appropriate uh, line of events, so we've got Friday, Three, next Friday, two, next Friday. One, pens down, go to Paul. Friday after next. It was Friday Absolutely. after next. Friday after next. It would be the Friday after next. Friday after next. Next. Throwing a perfect game right now, Marquis. So two questions away from getting that bonus question that will be asked only to him. I know, he's earning that shark moniker right now. <laughs> so in the category of horror thriller... No. What famous <laughs> Universal monster was portrayed by the actors Lon Chaney Jr. and Alicia uh, Del Toro? Oh, I love an answer where I just immediately start writing. <laughs> Do you like that? No, no thinking big required. Big oh, right. Love it. That's me out. Five. The original or the, the original? The original the new one. I Four, know the original. Three, two. One, Josh, you're not a horror fan. Did you have the answer? Is it Wolfman? Yeah! It is the Wolfman. Did Paul have it? The Wolfman. Paul had it. It was Wolfman. Wolfman. Seven to six. We really so just got to narrow down which made, one would uh, Benicio Del Toro play. I this description, but Makuga hanging in nicely. <laughs> and Oyama, if he answers this question right, will have a perfect round number one. And that question is in the world of animated movies. Oh, Animated movies. <laughs> Farts. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer. And your question is, in what Pixar film does Sigourney Weaver provide the voice of a character called Ship's Computer? Huh. Maybe the toughest round one category yet today. You know what? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, but no, I, but I think it's the same thing I'm already thinking of. So. Four, three, two, Still one. Still I can think of. Yep. Finding Dory? That no. Is incorrect. Oh. She was the... Wally? -E? Yeah. Oh. Wally. -E. Wall -E. Yeah, that, that'd be right. Yes. Finding Dory, obviously. But. She was the announcer voice in Finding Dory, but she was not a ship computer. <laughs> the only ship computer was Wally. -E. Ocean, so ocean liner ship. He is tied with Paul Uyama after round number 
for one. And Markeer, our build up of this match was that can Makuga match wits with the kid I feel known like Tommy as Lee, I'm the shark. My drumstick. I know. This is this is amazing. He's just uh, he was Didn't dancing around. He wanted well. everybody to fill that Here neckline on that pool back. blazer. <laughs> All right, and so now we collect our thoughts and ourselves. We apologize to anyone in the front row who did not wear a poncho to today's event. <laughs> and we move on to round number two. Awesome. In round number two, this and Josh, the shark, versus the wild man. But Josh, you come into today's match against all odds the favorite. Would you <laughs> like a spin at that wheel? I think it's just bruises on face instead of favorite. Uh, you know what? Beauty before age is what they say, right? That is a expression. That's so. the reverse way to say that expression, <laughs> yes. You know, listen, Marquia, I like you, and I like your smart You just put like down to my 10th favorite. Attitude. It's pretty smart. 10th favorite. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh yeah. He's going to the spin. A wheel slice yeah. is Wild sponsored on there, and that is Tom Cruise. I so if Oyama spins Tom enough. Cruise, we will say the name. Of the, the patron, around, and uh, he has spun He's spy fine. movies. Paul, yes. it's a fine spin. No, listen, your counterpart. Paul, would you like to spin again, or do you want to keep spy movies? <laughs> He's going to run it back, and like we said, there is a Patreon slice out there, thanks to the movie trivia phone out patron, <laughs> and that is Tom Cruise. So, yes. spins Tom Cruise. And oh, oh, he got glasses. glasses. Oh, he actually looks happy with that. He All said right. that was happy with it. And I think the shark is ready to be fed. The shark is indeed Almost everything ready is to his eat strength. Some classics, and if for no other reason, maybe it's nice to take classics because maybe not a strength of his counterparts, so not a lot of stealing available. I will be asking uh, Mr. Oyama his question. And Paul, your first of four in the world of classics is in the film It Happened One Night. What is the profession of the character played by Clark Gable? He's a reporter. He is a reporter for two points. Jeez. And Oyama vaults into the lead. It happened one night. I never saw that movie. Didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see anything before 84. 34. Next question for Paul. <laughs> Who was the director of 1954's mm. On the Waterfront? Elliot Kazan. That is correct for two more points. Wow. And Oyama may be wise to take that Did second he Elliot or here. Elia? Elia. He said Elia. <laughs> Don't like question the him. Just. Anybody? Your next question, Paul. Oh. Your penultimate one in this category. Wow. Who directed Singing in the Rain alongside Gene Kelly? Rest in peace, Stanley Donan. Yes, he did. Oh, and this is, is an excellent category. Dude, this is impressive. As you'll note, I'm not no trying to answer any of these questions. A There's a reason for that. As you know, I can't answer any of these questions. His last in round number two. In which classic did James Cagney smash a grapefruit into May Clark's face? <gasps> Go to five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. In which classic did James Cagney smash a grapefruit into May Clark's face? White Heat? That is incorrect for a very <laughs> unlikely steal, Josh McCoo. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, guess. So it's not Grapefruit King or Five, Grapefruit Monster. Four. <laughs> Uh, two it's Little Caesars. Well, it was a great guess. It's incorrect. The Public Enemy. I was gonna say the Public <laughs> Enemy. <laughs> <laughs> and Makuga still didn't get the Little Caesars. Caesar's. He did have a mm, pizza sounds sandwich. good. I'm hungry. I saw my children sacrificed yes. during that round, and, and I think he we're did actually here, name a classic movie. So that's a win <laughs> that's right a, there. Makuga <laughs> feeling all the right was Little C Is Little Caesar a movie? Uh, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> yes, it is. King of Makuga. His love of delivery pizza has served him well. You can spend the best. <laughs> All right, Josh Makuga. <sighs> so here comes Makuga. I'm going to miss the fact that we aren't going to see him in Houston. Yeah. Dancing to his own beat. Look at the moves. Is this gonna be oh, come on. Oh, spin it again. Coming of age movies. Uh, Josh, do you want to keep coming of age or would you like to spin again? Ooh, is he going to stay with that, or is he going to give it another go? Keeping in mind He's that this entire match is a gamble Asking for him. For their participation. Spin it again. We're going to need an answer here. He's going to cheat. 
Okay, that's a choice. Age movies. He's decided to stick with that. That is a choice. Age movies, and Marquis will be administering the questions, Josh. Sorry. In Love, Simon, who plays Simon's father, Jack? Oh, oh no. Is that Josh Jetuno? No. Um, yeah, wasn't it? It's got multiple choice. Is it A, Jason Bateman? Timothy yeah, Oliphant. No? Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, Josh DeHamel. C, Rain Wilson. Or D, Josh DeHamel. DeHamel. I believe DeHamel. it's D, Josh DeHamel. You're correct. It is D, Josh DeHamel. Oh, it's Josh DeHamel. Good call. There you go. I don't think I've ever said that was, name in real life. I, 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 I hate that they put Timothy Oliphant in there because I was actually questioning. Uh, this... You're pronouncing it incorrect across the board. It's Tad Hamilton. We all know that. Tad <laughs> Hamilton. Been one a day with him. Win a day. In Saturday Night Fever. Is that coming of age or just dance classic? When Tony Monero <laughs> isn't dancing, where does he work in a dead end job? Oh, no. <laughs> Multiple choice. I mean, his hair is sweet, so maybe a barber? Gonna go to five. five. I, like I should not Danny have picked this category. Three. Three. Let's go multiple choice. <laughs> he needs to work on the it's dog. A, in a butcher shop. Ooh. B, in a hardware store. Ah, oh, shoot. C, in a garage. Oh? D, in a restaurant. I think it's a restaurant. Well, it's got to be a dead-end job, right? I think it's a restaurant. <laughs> and I don't want to insult anybody working in any of these places. <laughs> in the 70s, I feel like you need an answer in like your five, dad's garage, garage. Four. That three, is incorrect. Farts. Okay, so for the steal, we're going to give you the options again, uh, Paul. Is it A, in a butcher shop, B, in a hardware store? He already store, knows or it. In a restaurant? Yeah. Is it a restaurant? Also nope. incorrect. Yeah, no. It's actually in a hardware store. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were about to say a barber shop. Yeah. That wasn't one of the choices. Just oh, like they did this butcher shop, right? Yes. Yeah. Cutting something, whether it was hair or meat. Steal from Paulo Yama, it's still a five point game. Oh, it was close. Two questions left for Josh in round number two. Who plays the adult version of Haley Joe Osment's character oh, in man. Secondhand Lions? Oh, man. I forgot there was an adult version. What movie? Secondhand Lions? Secondhand Lions. Secondhand lions or lions? Gotta multiple choice. I want to say Jim Carrey, but that was Simon Birch, Four, wasn't it? Uh, multiple choice. Was it Jesus, this, these are coming of age movies. Is it A. Age? Matthew McConaughey, B. Josh Lucas, C. Luke Wilson, or D. Viggo Mortensen? So one of the two middle ones. I think it's the first two. Probably Josh Lucas. Who looks the most like Haley Joel Osment. Uh, I think it's Josh Lucas. Let's go Josh Lucas. Yeah. That is correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we all felt the guessing powers of Josh McCuga because we guessed Josh Lucas. So much Josh to go around. Don't ever say that again. So we're definitely going to round three. There's no knockouts happening here today. And Josh McCuga, if he gets this one right, he's more than two of Pauliyama, but the steal is still in play. Let's see what happens. Rob Reiner directed what 2010 movie about two eighth graders who start to have feelings for each other despite being total opposites? What? 2010 movie with eighth graders? Gonna go to five, four. Multiple choice, me. Is it A, Palo Alto? B, Submarine? C, Flipped? Flipped. I think it's D, Flipped. The Runaways. Flipped sounds right. Because The Runaways is about The Runaways, the band. Let's see how this goes, though. He is powered by Rosé and Whiskey. I mean, I feel like right. the, some of those Four. even sound made. I'll go with Summering. Flipped. Oh, cool. Thanks, Paul. For the steal, it was. Yes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the shark didn't even wait. No, he uh, picked up the slack there quite Yeah, quickly. Flip sounded with right, but... C was correct for a point. That was a complete yes on my part. It is 14 to 9. Yeah. Oyama with a solid lead going into round three. But as we've seen in the past of the movie trivia, Shmodan Marquee, anything is possible <coughs> hey, once we enter into, into round three. Don't pick coming of age movies. <laughs> none of the ones you think are going to be in there. Yeah, yes. Unfortunately, this gamble might not have worked in the way that Makuga wanted it to, but he still has the rest of this uh, match to look forward to. And Thanks, you, you, you've got to think he spun, he, he saw coming of age movies, he was a little hesitant to take it he accepted it you gotta wonder what could have been but that's all in the past now as guys, we move in to round number three and you guys have my valet ticket i've got to get out of here <laughs> <laughs> Answer up to three knowing josh McCoogan the way i do he'll get knocked out it's actually impossible good don't worry about it all right so josh it's been gonna... great hanging with you guys again see you in four months all right josh we're gonna get your numbers <laughs> uh, after the um paul your 
three numbers are? 8, 17, and 12. No hesitation there at all. He knew exactly no what he wanted. hesitation at 12. And Josh, which three athletes would you like to borrow numbers from? Mm, three, nine, and uh, one. Very three powerful numbers. Some of these, though, I wonder why they think about it. Just say numbers. Yeah. Tell right, people so got their superstitions about which number Josh's you're feeling questions. in your gut. And we go to your two-point question, Josh. And which Marquee, one when you screams out ready. to you? And yes. this is the category romance. It's gonna be on it. For your two point question, who directed oh, Christ. If Beale Street Could Talk? Oh. That's a. Uh... Oh, wait. Uh, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Barry Jenkins. Yeah. Five, four, three. Alexander McQueen. Oh. That's that is... I'm sorry! That's not right. right. Yeah. That Barry is incorrect. Look at the Barry, Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins. Also Barry directed Jenkins. Moonlight. I don't pay attention to things that don't explode. Christ! <laughs> it didn't even take place with walking in Memphis. All right, now, Josh. Uh, Walking with my deep ten feet off a of beal. It wasn't even in the movie. It's going to be a matter of if Josh can recover from Anytime that Anytime you can put the boss in the snow down, with his that's three great. Question, which would bring him within two of Oyama. So, Marquia, when you're ready, Josh has his three point. Wait till I insult the audience one more time. Let's see it. This is your three point question in the category of Drew Barrymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Her movies aren't directed by Barry Jenkins, so I should be fine. What movie did Drew Barrymore play Daniela in this 1998 Cinderella uh, adaptation? Oh, no. What was that called? RB3, help me out. Oh, oh uh, you're not allowed to solicit help from anyone. The Harper. movie that had what's his face that couldn't play Wolverine. Yeah. Um, was, it called, was it called Ever After? Yes. yes. <laughs> the oh. Yeah, Doug Ray Scott. <laughs> Was gonna play Wolverine, couldn't because of reshoots on Mission Impossible Three. He's gotta hit this five pointer here, and then Oyama has to miss a few for him to actually win. Speaking of missing a few, they made a reference to Walking in Memphis a while ago, and I said the boss. And I don't think the boss has anything to do with Walking in Memphis. Glad this isn't jukebox trivia. It has nothing to do with it. In the category of Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, Your he likes Die Hard. Question in the category of 70s movies. <laughs> mm, close ish. Not really. <laughs> Are you trying to get in my head? You, you can do it, Josh. <laughs> Captain Kickass over here knew like movies from the 30s, okay? I don't even know what year Saturday Night Fever came out. Come on! The 70s? All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Some yes. About some, just give him the win. And your winner, Paul Oyama. Come on. <laughs> Released in 1978. <laughs> yeah. Fist is the story oh, of no. your Johnny Kovac. Who plays Oh, no. Kovac? Wait, what? <laughs> All right, you, you can't just say what. Would you like to use a JTE rule? Yeah, okay, Mark, take it easy over there. Yeah. <laughs> use a JTE rule. Play it again. Released in 1978. Fist, Fist? is the story F I S T. Okay, never heard of it. Go ahead. Is the story of oh, this Union the right way. Johnny Kovac. Who plays Kovac? All right, so there's like four people that are famous in the 70s. <laughs> Found it out, it could to process Johnny Kovacs. I really hope he gets this. We got like Gene Hackman, Jack Nicholson. Gonna go to five. Four, Ned Beatty. Four. Danny three. DeVito. Repeat the question one more time. Released in 1978. Great year. F I S T yeah. is the story of union boss Johnny Kovac. Who plays Kovac? I have no idea. It's clearly. Exhausted his JTE rules. Yeah. He's heard the question. He knows the question. But he said there's only so many. All right, people you know what? I'm famous. just going to go. I'll say Gene Hackman. And, and your winner! Paul the Shark! I would have loved it if he actually got it. That would have been awesome. Oh so my gosh. Stallone. Stallone. Ah. Yes. It was. It was impressive guesswork, though. 
also <laughs> famous in the seventies. Well into round three, and at some point, Paul Yama had already disappeared from the desk. But here's Sam Levine, the yes. commissioner, congratulating yeah. Sam. Okay, now, if Makuga yeah. lost this match, Sam, yeah. you had previously stipulated that he would be banned for two months. Two months. Two I months. think I deserve that after not knowing Barry Jenkins. So, yeah. uh, uh, Do you want to amend I want to make it more, but I'm going to stick with what I said before. We'll see you in two months, Okay, Kim. no problem. Go watch some Barry Jenkins movies. Yep. Talk to you guys later. I'll make sure to uh, to uh, thank everybody for coming. Thank you guys so much. I apologize for Paul, Paul Oyama. That guy knows way too much about movies at that young of an age. Uh, enjoy your whiskey. Happy Saturday. All right, well, he gets a oh, what day do they film these on? Just indicated, Marky. We won't be seeing the likes yeah, of Makuga Tuesday. for a couple oh, months. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you look at this match today, and <laughs> Makuga did what Makuga is very good at doing. He guessed his way into a competitive match, but Paul Oyama, too much. Were you impressed by Paul Oyama, or do you think maybe he left a little bit on the table? No, I think uh, the shark definitely cleaned up the chum that was in the waters <laughs> for this particular match. Uh, he was very direct. He knew exactly what he wanted. There were no pauses. He knew that he didn't want that first spin off the wheel. He knew that second spin was going to be perfect for him. Not not only was it something that he knew, but he reasoned that it was something that his opponent did not know. Yeah, Paul Oyama, I, I think a well-played match. Again, he didn't have to answer any round three questions, mm -hmm. so his point total, 14-12. to 12, A little misleading there. Josh Bakuga, all the props in the world to my good buddy, the wild man. And now we're going to have an interview with both the winner and the loser of today's <sighs> match with our own Jen Sturger. Apparently Jen, Makuga does not away. like fist. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Paul Oyama. Classics, really? Really? I, I was actually really impressed with how you handled that. I yeah. was like, oh, he's really going to take that. Could have been better, but, you know. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you did just take down one of the veterans in the league. How are you feeling after that? You're 2-0 now. Yeah, I mean, you're ready to keep cracking. Just give me the next match. Okay, so who are we thinking? Chance. Hey, Chance? There you go. Can you, Ellison? Whoa. Can you just please do your job? Get chance? You want Chance? Of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, he still has to get through either Emma or Rosie, but... Yeah, that is a big if, you're right. But if he can do his job, I'd love to put the kid in his place. I mean, come on. Why come chance? On. Why chance? This guy got the shot before me. He doesn't deserve to be here. Are you kidding me? He's out here wobbling, barely beating Janine, struggling along. Like, come on. All right, we'll see what I can do for you. If you can do that, it's much appreciated. Oh, Coogs. What are you waiting for? It's uh, some whiskey. You want some? Oh, no. <laughs> Guys, oh my God, that it's a post-match celebration of sorts. Uh, so, I'm, Josh, you want. I know, but here, let me let me, let me me go with this for a second, okay? Um, Gosh. You know, uh, when you when your favorite movie is <laughs> Fist, and uh, you it don't, you know, and, uh, you know, 1978 was a great year for the Makugas. Uh, huge Fist fans out there, just always about the Fist uh, big, like we were always going to like fisting reunions and all that kind of stuff. So, well, fist. It's such a good movie starring who was in it? Stallone. Oh, so, oh, I right. tried to make the, the joke. No, nope. he did it better. Are you kidding me? Fist, fist, fist. Dan, have you, let me ask you a question. On, no. Thank you. Have you ever heard of the movie Fist until today? No. Never. Thank you very much. And have you heard of Sylvester Stallone until today? Yes, of course. Okay. And have you heard that Sylvester Stallone was in a movie called Fist? Thank God you ended that sentence the way it did. Correct. No. No, you didn't. <clears throat> and you know who else did it? Everybody else that watches the movie Trivia Schmodown. Okay? <laughs> the movie Fist is silly. Nobody ever names a movie Fist unless it's a porn and you're weird. Okay? So Fist can go fist itself. <laughs> what else you got, Tim? Back to you guys. No, no, this interview isn't over yet, RB3. We're gonna keep going. Jen, get back here. You get back here right now. I don't get to talk to you for two months. Two whole months. Yeah, have a little bit of that. It's whiskey time, everybody. Oh Let me God. tell you a little something about Paul Oyama. <laughs> oh, Yama, never gonna play that guy again. He doesn't have any fun. He wears sunglasses inside, which is a rule against humanity. You never wear sunglasses inside unless you have an eye condition and your eyes hurt from light. And I don't think his do, because after the match, he took the sunglasses off. What else you got, Jen? But you aren't really supposed to wear shorts with blazers, though, right? You can wear shorts with blazers anytime you want. This is a pool blazer, and the only prop appropriate bottoms are shorts. Cody Hall knows it, RB3 knows it, and so is JT. <laughs> you sure it's not going to be six months the way you're going? 
I'm not yelling at anybody else what are but the gonna, movie Fist. What are you going to do with your time off, I guess? Is the best oh, there's so much. Watch uh, you know, my wife wanted to go on vacation for a while. We were thinking about uh, driving up the 118, see what happens up there, like Inland Valley. Uh, I can get windy, maybe a little desert, maybe a Best Western out in the desert. You never know. In two months, anything could happen. I could watch a lot of movies and learn who directors are. Because i got to be honest, I apologize to Barry Jenkins and everything he's done. A very important director in movies today. I just don't know who directs anything. Seriously, I've got nothing. Outside of Spielberg, and you could probably give me a Spielberg movie and I'd be like, I don't know, Zemeckis, and I'd probably get it wrong. I don't know directors, and that apparently is a weak point in me, and everybody else seems to know who directors are. I got nothing. But I tell you what I did get, Jen. Not Ever fast. After, starring Drew Barrymore. That was a good poll. Isn't, wait, hold on. And another thing, Jen, you're, you're great. You're fantastic. You're great at doing this. Did you know half of those coming-of-age movies? Like, when I think of coming-of-age movies, I think of, like, Never Been Kissed. I think of Goonies. I think of Edge of Seventeen. Breakfast. Breakfast Club, thank you very much. Uh, Outsiders, all of those Day Off. Flipped. Rob Reiner got paid like 150 k and a bag of weed to direct Flipped. And they never even heard of it. Flipped. It sounds like Flipper's alter ego <coughs> brother Flipped. And he's like, he doesn't have half a torso. You're like, no, that's actually Dolphin Tales starring Morgan Freeman. So now it doesn't even make any sense. Sorry I yelled. I think I broke everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank you for all the hard work that you do. So for the next two months, everybody, check out all your uh, Schmodown-related stuff and follow me on social media where I will be uh, just having a good time making random comments about certain things that probably don't have anything to do with movies, maybe a little more TV. And to you, Barry Jenkins, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. Keep making great movies that don't have that song, Walking in Memphis. Back to you guys. All right, Marquis, you see that? That's the that's a typical enthusiasm and interview really between Josh and Jen that we're accustomed to. We're going to miss that guy for a couple months. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're going to be uh, definitely less pastel colored around here <laughs> without having uh, some Akuga in our lives. But he's not out completely. He's just out for two months. It's like a sabbatical. He can, you know, brush up on his reasoning skills and bring back that legendary charm and guesswork. <laughs> when he's back. Yeah, and he can catch it. Bill Street could talk. It's a really good movie. Now, when you look at Oyama, I mean, it, sometimes when a competitor wins a match, they say, I'll take on anybody. And I think Oyama's up for whoever his next competitor is, but he clearly wants a shot at chance. He said as much. The two... They, they both came up through the family, so they have a similar track getting here. And if that matchup does indeed take place, first of all, a local gas station will be sold out of sunglasses because those gentlemen <laughs> like their shades. And I think it's going to be an all-time classic if we get it. Yes, I, I'm looking forward to the destruction and the wake of uh, Paul the Shark Oyama. In fact, I think he started off this entire match as primetime. He is now the Shark. We're calling him the Shark now because, look, Oyama takes the victory here today in a technical knockout over Josh, the wild man, Maku. You guys, make sure that y'all check out TriviaSD.com for all the latest goings on in the world of the movie Trivia Schmodown and the SchmodownLive.com for tickets to upcoming live events. I want to give a big thank you to my partner in crime, Marquia McCarty. Thank you so much for making your debut with me on The Answer Desk. Where can all the kids out there find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Marquia McCarty, M-A-R-K-E-I-A, M-C-C-A-R-T-Y. And if you love DC Universe, you can see me on DC Daily. I'm a host there Monday through Friday. Marquia crushing it in all corners corners of the entertainment world right now and she enjoys a hearty IPA as I am well aware. I am merely Mark Baby Caratellis. You can get tickets to upcoming comedy shows at MarkEllisLive.com Check out the Movie Trivia Schmodown podcast on Himalaya and in the, if you want to join the world of the Movie Trivia Schmodown and you want to get more involved we have a Patreon. Just go to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon and select which tier is right for you. For Mark Ian McCarty and Christian Harloff, I am merely Mark Ellis. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you real soon. More? More do you have to say? Such a handsome boy. Nothing, nothing. I was just making sure everything's in inventory check. What's up? <clears throat> that was weird. Um, listen. Emma's been giving me the whole run around with the team. So oh, no, 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 that's not my bag. That's yes, between you and her. I, mean, I know, that's not what I'm here about. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm talking about the singles league. Yeah. So Janine, you know, she beat Stacey. She's uh -huh. coming up in the ranks. And I hate corruption. With a deep down rooted passion. Oh, want corruption. Bunch of jerks. They're just horrible. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so listen, I want Janine versus Kalinowski. Can we do that? Wait, give me no, just Janine versus mm -hmm. Mother. That's it. You got him. You know what? You're pretty good at this. Hey, thanks, buddy. You're pretty good at it too. You go back to having right. your fantasy. Yeah, I'll see you around. Uh, I'm going to get you a fresh tub of polish. You deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
was weird. So that match happened exactly the way we thought it would. Makuga was entertaining. And uh, lost. Oyama was a powerhouse. And won. We all need to watch Fist. No, we don't. The Stallone movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Probably not. And we all need to brush up on our classics. I just feel like bad. Yeah, there's... Here's the thing. It's it's not even a matter of I've heard of these movies and just never didn't didn't put two and two about who was in them or what was happening. Uh, I never heard of those movies. <laughs> I've um, just never th those movies. I've just they've never hit my ears before. I mean, some of those movies are extremely classic. It happened one night on the waterfront. These are movies. I would say that as a okay cine fanatic. Yeah, I will take it back. I have heard of some of these movies, but the joke is that, I, that okay. So, I, I I think the realistic nature of it is is there's just a lot of movies out there, and with the limited amount of time that a working person has in their life, it's kind of hard to get to all of these. Not that I want to make excuses, but you know what? Well, I want to make excuses. And we are renaming the channel Current Cine Fanatics. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need to do. <laughs> or just go watch some classic movies. I Only mean, movies that's... from 1985 on. Yeah. <laughs> you say, I haven't seen a movie since 1984 and, and before 1984. And Star Wars. Yeah. So, yeah, that went exactly like we thought it would. Maybe not Star Wars for some people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, Josh is always fun to watch. I hate that his actions with the belt has caused him to be put into a position where there had to be a stipulation as to whether or not he would have a large amount of time suspended from the league because I want to see Josh in every single match. But I also really like and appreciate the fact that they make stories for the Schmodown out of left field at this point, and it's fantastic. Can we have a spinoff YouTube channel, the Josh Makuga Trivia League Schmodown? Josh, where every match is just Josh Makuga against someone. It doesn't matter. I am down with that. Yeah, okay. So, uh, that being said, housekeeping time. That was a fun match, but let's move on. Mm -hmm. There's stuff happening in the world of Cinefanatics and Schmodam, including, what was it, in a couple weeks? Yeah. Two or three weeks? Still not soon enough. Yeah, I feel like we've been talking about this for like two months now, which is probably actually an accurate number. Yeah. Ish. But Schmodown is coming to our great state. While it's not coming here to Austin, it is coming three hours away from us to Houston, which is absolutely doable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, I just think, both of us have been to Houston a couple of times. If the Schmodown was coming to El Paso, still doable. That's ten hours away. It's not a fun drive. Yeah, There's no. nothing between here and Houston. There really isn't. There is... Yeah, nothing. There's some uh, large gas stations. Yeah. I one of those. Maybe a Bucky's. Yeah, get some beaver nuggets. Yeah. If you live in Texas, you know what we're talking about. Beaver nuggets are awesome. Anyway, so that's coming. We're both really excited. There's there's just so much. I mean, we got the actual Schmodown itself and Booker T's wrestling arena actually in a wrestling ring between Guy and Bateman. Which, thank God, we know what it looks like now. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, someone's definitely getting tackled again. Um... That's a waste of a wrestling arena if someone doesn't. Here's the, here's the thing. I would like to see Booker T tackle Andrew Guy. I was thinking, I'll, like, I, I foresee, like, Andrew Guy going as far as tackling, like, Christian. They should have the stipulations of this match, and on top of that, the, whoever the, loses gets a beat down by Booker T. Can you dig it? Christian, make it happen. And yes, I can, sucker. Um... Yeah, so there's that, and now we, along with Tim Sim from the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook group, as well as an uh, article writer on TriviaSD.com, mm -hmm. writes some great articles, go check him out. Uh, the three of us, since he lives in Houston, he's kind of a point man, the three of us are hosting the fan meetup the night before, so... <laughs> I forget we're doing that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be at timeout number one, got the name right this time, go me. Um, that's like right next to the joke joint too. Yeah, it is in the sh same shopping center corner parking lot as the joke joint, which just so happens to be 
where Mark Ellis is performing his stand-up on that night. So if you would like to join us, we will be at timeout number one, essentially from 7 p.m. to whenever it closes, which is typically in Texas is at 2 a.m. or whenever we're all ready to just call it a night. Yep. Now, keep in mind, we are going to be attending Mark Ellis' stand-up at 10 p.m. So if you would like to join us, go check out Mark Ellis's. Well, let's go check out his website to pick up tickets to his show. And then you can join us. I believe Tim Sim is also going to be doing the 10 p.m. showing. So yeah. you can just join a bunch of us because it sounds like a lot of people are doing the 10 p.m. show. Or go check out the 7.30 show and just meet up with us when you're not at the show. We will be at timeout number one. So Either way, you want tickets to Schmodown, it's at theschmodownlive.com. You want tickets to Mark Ellis, it's at markelleslive.com. So... Pick up your tickets to both of those things, and we will see you in Houston. Yeah. And also, help support the Schmodown any way you can. <clears throat> Head on over to Patreon and donate to them through the Patreon. If you have they, money, throw it at them on Patreon. They've got a lot of great benefits, including exhibition matches and getting on the Discord, being able to chat and make connections with, like, you know, people like Tim Sim to help arrange meetups. Yeah. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Also, go over to their YouTube channel. You can like and comment on their YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to them. Am I leaving anybody out? Oh, that's right. We have a YouTube channel, don't we? Check out the Cine Fanatics. That would be us. And all of our content here on the Cine Fanatics channel. And let us know what you think of this video. Like, comment, dislike, I guess. Hey, I do the gestures. Must. Oh, I can't gesture? No. I feel like, like Lewis Black. Like, I want to gesture this. You talk and I gesture. Anyways, make sure you like and comment. Also, up above our heads is a subscribe button. Please click that. Over here are a couple other videos you could watch. You could click those, too, along with the subscribe button. And as always, it's shark time, baby. Yeah, I guess. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Later. See ya. Baby, prime time, do, no. do, 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 do.